Welcome to the Tall Girl Tuesday podcast. It's your girl, Danny. And on this week's episode of News and Libations, I'm going to be touching on the topic of independence and introvertedness. Well, being an introvert. And um, the first thing on my mind was wondering if you guys feel like a woman can be too independent. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? For me, I just think about my own life and my own experiences. And it's like, hmm, all I know is me and all I have is me. And the only person I can depend on is me. It's very self-centered. My life is very self-centered around myself. Um, That's just the nature of that's just the nature of um my circumstances that's how it's been and um i i'm noticing and realizing that some people have different opinions about well not really different opinions but some people have um reservations about uh people who fit into the character have reservations for people for women who fit into the same category as me. And I'm realizing that, um, you know, it's definitely something that should be t- uh, discussed and talked about. Do you feel like a woman can be too independent? I honestly think that's absolutely absurd. Um, if you want stuff done and you got to do it for yourself. And some people are lucky enough to have like, um, you know, support systems and families and, relationships and friendships where you know they build each other up and they have this bond that they depend on each other they rely on each other and things like that but that's not reality for a lot of people myself included so I feel like um I'm a creature of habit or you know product of my environment well I can't say product of my environment I will say I'm a creature of habit because this is the only way I know how to be because this is the only choice that I've had. I've had no other choice but to rely on self, depend on self, choose self, worry about self, and um, be okay with the fact that, you know, not too many people even, you not going to say care, but not too many people put effort into being supportive. I'll put it that way. So I'm just wondering, you know, what do you guys think about it? Is Can a woman be too independent? I, I don't think so. But um, that just had me thinking. That was the base of what, what's been on my mind for this episode. But digging even a little bit deeper into that, what this independence is like, the pressure to have kids and all of that, and it's like um, when people say say things like that to me in terms of having kids and when am I going to have them or why don't I have them? It's almost a, not going to say almost. It's offensive because that's just like saying it's highly offensive to me. And um, it's like not every not every woman wants to have kids. Just like I feel like we've been conditioned to believe that. We need these things in our lives to fulfill some type of uh, self-worth or whatever that may be. But it's it's offensive to me. And I'm like, I get that a lot. And it's funny because a girlfriend and I were just talking about it. And she was on the phone with her friend who's a mutual, you know, who I know through her. And they're just like, oh, you're going to have a kid in uh, two years. Like, I can feel it. And I'm sitting here like, uh, no, highly doubt that. Number one, I feel like if I was supposed to have them or if I was going to have them, I would have had them by now. And I also feel like um, one thing about me since I was growing up and seeing things the way they were in my life, I always knew that if the only way that I was going to have kids was to be married first. Now, some people feel like that's like, oh, but what if the marriage doesn't work and blah, blah, blah. Well, if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But at the same time, I knew that that was the only 
that was the only way that I would have kids is I'm going to be a missus before I'm going to be a mother. And um, not everybody feels that way. And that's okay, too. Like, you know, everybody has their ideas of how they want their life to go. Now, I understand that we don't always have control over it. But I feel like that is something that I could have control over. And I'm not married. So I'm pretty sure at this point it's not going to happen for me. And even still, that doesn't even necessarily mean that I want to get married. I want to have children once I'm married. Like, I don't know. It's it's like um, the pressure to have children is real. And it's like, why? Because it's not like I have a... It's not like I have a, a so it's not like I have a supportive group of people or um you know like this child is going to be born into this amazing situation where it's like a bunch of support from people and all of that that wouldn't be the case I would just be extremely introverted but with the child so it's like I don't I don't I don't know why people always seem to um put that pressure on me about asking about kids and stuff like that. And I'm like, is it because I'm a woman or is it because something about me that is, I don't know, giving off the energy that I would be a great mom or I don't know, but I, I, I feel like we need to change the narrative of thinking that because I'm a woman or that I should have kids. That's not the case. I've never talked about having kids. I've never expressed that I wanted to have kids. I'm not even that person. Like if I see a kid at the table next to me, I'm like trying to touch it and say hi and, you know, talk to it in a baby voice. I'm not that person at all. I'm, I'm just like, what is it about me? Is it just me personally? Or is it just because of the age that I am that people just, it's, I'm at that point where it's like, okay, it's time for you to have a child. So I don't, I don't know. Like if you guys are like that with your friends who don't have children, what is your reasoning behind that? Is it something about their vibe or their energy that's saying like, you know, they would be a good mother? Or is it just something that we've been conditioned to believe should happen at a certain age? Let me know what you guys think about that. And it's like, um, in terms of being independent and, um, along with that comes being an introvert <laughs> and that one for me is like, especially in terms of, um, the current pandemic and all that's going on with COVID and stuff. Most people are like, you know, um, how do you feel about it? How has it affected you? And I'm like, honestly, social distancing is my entire life. Not going to say my entire life, but that's that's my life. I'm always by myself for the most part. I'm home. It's just me and my space and my pets and my plants. And um, I know I'm probably sounding like the uh, crazy cat lady, but no, no cats. But that is that's how I am I don't rock with a lot of people I don't communicate with a lot of people it's just really me being in my space and then it, when I invite people into my space that's really hard for me too because it's like a certain type of energy that I I need around me in order to feel comfortable and it's also a type uh, it and there's also a type of energy that I need to stay away from to protect this energy that's in my space, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, being independent and introverted is like, it's a lot. Um, with that comes its struggles too. It's like people just assume because I'm, I'm, I live alone and I'm like I said here with my pets is that like I want to be this way and it's like that's not necessarily the case I don't really brag about it or make it a point to sit here and tell everybody like oh I live alone and all of that like it's really not that exciting once you get to a certain age you figure I moved out when I was 19 years old 
and I've been living alone for the past 15 going on 16 years this um this year I'll be 35 in December so I've been doing this for almost half of my life I've been I've spent by myself and in my own space and doing my own thing making paying my own bills looking out for myself making sure I'm straight just really grinding it out and doing it for myself because that is just the circumstances of my life and um not that it's something to it's something to be proud of I'll say that because the ability to be able to do it alone is is amazing and um it, it also comes with its disadvantages and it's like people just assume that you know they can just hit you up or come over when it's convenient for them or and it doesn't work that way and it's like you know in return it, you have like it has to be some type of mutual understanding and that's not always received well and um <laughs> and i'm speaking on that specifically specifically like in terms of dating and relation relationships and things like that i've never been in a long-term relationship my longest was my last one and that was let's say two years to to play it safe um and that ended horribly so if you don't know what happened with that just refer back to the last news and libations episode you can get all of that information there so it, it it's a lot of things that go into being introverted and being independent there's there's a lot of different type of feelings there's a, a lot of different type of emotions there's a lot of different types of just questioning your own self and your own path. And I'm not going to say your own me, questioning my own self, my own path. And, you know, like what's next for me? Like, is this how it's going to be forever? It's been this way for so long. It's now to the point where lately I've really been thinking about what the transition would be like for me um should the opportunity present itself where i have to share my space with the spouse that's scary to me because in addition to just being on my own doing things my way i have like crazy ocd ways about me where it's like um i can't Im i just can't imagine sharing my space and having someone disrupt the way that I've been, I've conditioned myself to, uh, live or to, um, ha to, to have like the way things are even in my place. Like I'll give you a, an example and I can't believe I'm about to share this. Like even down to my refrigerator and my s spice cabinet, for instance, in my refrigerator, everything has to be facing forward like labels and all of that and like let's say I have bottled water which I drink room temperature water but let's say I have bottled water in my refrigerator I decide to put like you know some bottles of water in there they all have to be in a row they all have to be in um let's say I have eight bottles of water in my refrigerator it has to be four in one row and four in the next row and they all have to be facing forward with the label same thing with my like uh seasonings cabinet and my pantry all my seasonings are color coordinated they all have to be facing the same way there can only be a certain amount in a row and i'm thinking like this is the way i this is the way i like things imagine like having a spouse come into the mix and having to you know like not necessarily explain that to them but explain to them like this is the way it is and is that something that you could deal with? You know, I'm just out I, at this point. I'm really concerned about the tra the transition um, or what it what it's going to be like. But at the same time, I welcome it. And um, that goes back to another thing that the assumption is, like I said, that people just assume that this is the way it is because I want it to be not necessarily. But I also feel like I don't play house with men. I'm not that girl that's like, if I'm not committed to you, um, I'm not playing house with you. We're not going to just sit here and be like 
sharing space and sharing genitals and all of that and we're just like casually you know not really like officially committed to each other I don't know I'm just like I'm been thinking a lot lately like what would that look like for me like would I be able to be more lenient with the things that I've been so strict on in terms of the way I live like my my living space would I be able to compromise that's the word I've been looking for would I be able to compromise in that type of situation um I don't know but I guess I don't know if I'm in my feelings this weekend or if I'm just really thinking about long-term stuff or like what I would like to see happen within the next couple years for my life and it's like I don't think anybody wants to be alone forever I know I don't and that's a, an assumption that people have it's like oh you that way because that's your choice well it is my choice but at the same time it, it I'm not just about to settle and just be out here and sharing my space with anybody just to say I'm 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 with somebody that's absolutely not going to happen either in the same but in terms of but moving on to the next topic that was on my mind it's like discussing triggers when dating and meeting um new people how do you guys deal with that like do you just right off the bat say this is what I do like and don't like or do you like kind of fill out the situation first to see if it's even worth having that conversation with so for me it's like um I got a lot of ways about me that a person who dates me would have to would have to be patient with me and um I think that my personality is what it is. I can't really hide when I'm feeling the type of way or if something is bothering me or anything like that anymore. That's something I had to learn too. So it's like I I think right now where I am in life is really like trying to find out who's even worthy of getting to know me on a deeper level like on the surface what you see is what you get that's just like an equivalent to a follow on a social media platform you know what I mean but just with a little more added benefits like a phone number or a text message or maybe a meetup once in a while but in terms of like dating and I like intentionally dating someone I think it it'll take me some time to discuss my triggers because I I've been through I've been through some things. I mean, we all have, but it's like, you know, I feel like the things that I've been through have conditioned me to be a certain way and the guy that I date essentially would have would have to know and decide if like, you know, if this is something that you can deal with or is this something that you're willing to be patient about or you know if it's if it if it comes up so uh yeah i know some people i've been speaking with people they talk about their triggers like from the beginning with everybody and i'm like everybody doesn't need deserve to know you in in that way so like i'm not sharing with you unless i really feel like you're worth it and that um i see the potential because one thing that I hate doing is wasting my time and that's in any type of situation in a phone call where somebody's you know like just ranting or rambling or just like you know it it's just not it's just a conversation that's not going well if it's like a meet up or a link up or a date or something where it's like um didn't go well or it was weird and the situation you know i i just have a thing about wasting my time that to me bothers me and i don't know if that's something that comes with the independence or the introvertedness or is that just who i am as a person like Danny the person the 34 year old capricorn or is it more like the the way I've been conditioned to to live and to be? But um, 
<laughs> I was having a conversation with a girlfriend of mine. A girlfriend and I were we talk about everything from A to Z, and we we just talk about everything under the sun. And she was asking me, like, you know, in terms of where I what would I like or what am I looking for and things like that. And one of the questions was like, have I given up on myself? And that's based off of my last relationship and just the way that things have been going, like just in life, period. And, you know, I was like, you know, that's a really good question. Um, (laughs) Because in terms of dating, like I said, I've never really been in a long term relationship. And the longest one I had was my last ended bad. Not trying to sound repetitive, but that's just the way it was. So I don't know if it was, I think I'm grateful at this point that I haven't really stuck around with a, and been in a lot of different situations that weren't good for me because it it, is in the past, it's been easy for me to just say, it's time for me to exit and keep it moving. My cousin used to say, Dad, you give him a short run. That's how he used to put it. And we used to laugh, but it's like, listen, I ain't going to waste your time. If I ain't in it, I ain't in it. But I, I, don't, I don't think I've given up on myself. I think that my, my opinion on relationships have changed drastically. I don't view relationships the way that I did before. And... um I don't know if that's singular to my last experience, but I'm just like, not even what I've been dealing with personally, but the things that I see other people go through too and deal with, with their past relationships and their current relationships. And it's just like the way I've been conditioned to think that relationships should be, I don't, I don't have that opinion about them anymore. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm very like, I'm just, um, my thoughts on relationships have changed. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't think they're as solid as people, um, make them out to be. I think it's a lot of people out here fronting and frauding, um, just to say that they're with somebody or just settling for anything. And that's not something that I'll ever do again. I'll put it that way. So, yeah, um, that's really what's been on my mind. Just a little ramble, just rambling a little bit about independence and being introverted. Those two eyes together make for a very, a very, I'm not going to say complicated, but a very complex woman. And, um, I want to know what you guys think about that. Like, do you think women can be too independent and do you prefer a woman who's more introverted or do you prefer a woman who's like extroverted and you know a lot of friends well frenemies acquaintances whatever and somebody who's just always on the go like what do you guys prefer in your own personal um dating situations or even with the people that you surround yourself with are they more um introverted or are they more extroverted and are they more independent would just or have more like a solid family foundation you know um very family oriented and things like that what is your experience is with um people on this topic not even just women i'm speaking for not even just for um the men who are dating women what about i'm also referring to the women who date men would do you prefer a guy who's more like a family man or do you prefer someone who's about their business about themselves and you know stay to themselves for the most part let me know what you guys think um i think for me i'll probably it used to be for big for me to be with someone who was very family oriented and who loved to be around their family and had that family support and um I think that that's the type of person who's who who brings me out of my little bubble that I'm in. And I think I've probably been dating guys who are the exact opposite for me, family oriented and extroverted, like spontaneous and 
just do things on the fly. I'm more of a structured girl. I want to have a plan. I want to know what's to come. I want to know what your intentions are. I'm, I, I'm that person. I'm like, I like structure, but it's like, I'm probably going to end up with someone who's the exact opposite, but I feel like that could be a good thing too. But let me know what you guys think. Um, I feel like if I was with a person who was introverted like me, I would be barefoot and pregnant, um, just popping out babies. Honestly, I like two two people with the same mentality as me. I I think that's a bad mix because we would never do anything. We would never go out. Like, what is the sun? Like, we literally just home bodies home bodies 101 but anyway just wanted to jump on here real quick talk about the things that i have been on my mind lately and um just share a couple things i've been having conversations with my um a girlfriend of mine recently and these are just some of the things that we touched on but let me know what you guys think don't forget you can always email me at tgt the podcast at gmail.com I thank you guys for tuning in as always, and I'll catch you next week.